YouTubers, welcome back. It's Tyler here, and for you today, we're gonna do some more tuning secrets of the Holly 4150. And today, we're gonna be going over power-up valve, going over the discharge nozzles, going over the accelerator pump, and going over the cams for your accelerator pump. And all this has to work very good in conjunction with your slapping the throttle, the primaries, the secondaries has to be timed out completely right. And this is something that's overlooked a lot when it comes to carburetors, probably because you're not wearing a mullet hat or a mullet, because if you don't have one of the two, you will not get this right. Now, a lot of people think you do not need a wide band to tune your carburetor, and that is completely false, completely false. The reason why is because a lot of people will hit it and they wait till the end of the quarter or a long pull, and they'll pull their plugs and say, I need a jet up, you know, the jets here and there. That is fine and dandy to get your jets correctly. You can probably do that if you're really good at reading plugs without using a wide band. But the wide band is gonna allow you to tune your power valve, your discharge nozzles, your accelerator pump, and the cams right off the hip. Because there is no way that you can tune that without a wide band. And today we're going over just that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put the wrong discharge nozzles here in the top. But to explain how these work, you need to know how all this works too with that. Now the way a carburetor works, it draws in vacuum through your main boosters, which are up here. Discharge nozzles right here, or squirters. You have your diaphragm right here as the arm comes up to the arm of your carburetor. And this is this little diaphragm, fuel sits in here, and when this goes down, fuel comes out at the top right here. Now you're probably asking yourself, well why do I even need discharge nozzles, accelerator pump, and cams for this guy right here? Why can't I just rely on vacuum pulling the fuel through the Venturis? Well the reason why is because it takes a second for it to pull the fuel from the bowls up into your metering block and out through your boosters. And you have to have this system because if not, you would have a serious delay. It probably pop through the carb and go lean, or you have to really slowly open the throttle so you don't get a lean spot. And that's exactly what this system does for the Holly carburetor. And that's why it's so crucial to tune it just right. Let's talk about the cams right here. The cam is behind this arm right here. It goes to this arm. It does exactly what you might think. As it comes up, it moves this arm right here and it dictates how much fuel and the speed that it's gonna move that arm down to get your fuel curve right in the happy zone of your motor. And they make a big variety of cams. This is one that was a lot bigger that I've actually shaved down in the past or different carburetors to get it just right. But if you put these two together, you can see right away that that is a huge difference on how much fuel and how quickly it's gonna discharge it into the motor. Now these cams are gonna have the most drastic effect on how much fuel is discharged through the system. But you have to take into account this. If you're going to a really big cam on the arm right here that's gonna drastically move this down faster, you're going to need a bigger discharge nozzle up top and they have stamped numbers on these. I'll have a little picture right here that I'm gonna put up. You can see different sizes. And they also make different size screws right here on the top also. So you have to take into account if you're gonna move a lot of volume of fuel off the hit, you gotta get rid of the restrictions from here up to the discharge nozzle. They even make a different size accelerator pump. This is a 50cc pump. They make a 30cc pump. So if you're gonna have that much fuel, you have to take into account all the volume of fuel you're gonna move off the hit, else you're doing yourself no good. All right, so when you remove these, you gotta be very careful. Uh, this is an aftermarket main body, so it comes to its own screws. All, it's the same as the other ones. All it does is just use a Allen key at the top to remove them. So we're gonna take this off. And you gotta be very, very careful because there's a gasket up here, there's a gasket down there. So you take this off, we're gonna slowly take it off. Right? To where it's loose. I'm gonna grab the bottom, and as I move it, I'm gonna make sure the gasket isn't sticking to it. See how it's sticking? Okay, it fell off. Just leave it right there. Don't bump it because you don't want that falling into the main body. And there you go. We have removed our discharge nozzle. All right, so we got our gasket in the top. 
I'm just going to feed the screw down in there, right? And very carefully, do not bump that gasket off. We're just going to stick the screw right there, let it fall into place, and finger screw it in. But you really don't want to over tighten this and strip the threads in your main body because that will pretty much put it into your day of fun with your carburetor. And we're going to gently torque it down. We're not going to torque it down that much, but you got to get it a little tight so it doesn't vibrate loose and go into your motor, but you really can't overdo it. So there we have it. Now if you notice, this one's different than the other one because the other one has a dog legs. I prefer the dog legs and the annular boosters because it'll hit the boosters and help atomize the splash as it goes into the motor. Uh, they have down legs, these are annular, we won't get into that right now, but I really like the uh, dog legs over the non-dog leg. Um, discharge nozzles. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the front. I'm putting 25s on both. I had 40s on there before. We're going to go for a ride. You'll see when I hit this really hard to open up the um, front and the rear, it's going to go really lean on the Y band. It's probably important to note before someone jumps down my throat that uh, on double pumper carburetors, this 4150, they have an identical system on the rear also. So everything that we addressed on the front, they also have this on the rear. And it's very important that you get the cams, the accelerator pump, and the discharge nozzles all set up correctly so you have no lean spot. Well, all right, we put 25s on the front and the rear. Let's just see how lean it is when we go out in the street and hit the throttle on the wide band. You're gonna like this. It's gonna suck. All right, I want you guys to pay attention to this. I'm very, very light hitting the throttle. I'm gonna shift gears and watch it go dead lean. See that? Not a big deal. This is all power valve related. That has nothing to do with the discharge nozzles, the cam, or the accelerator pump. All right, so I'm in second gear here, and you'll see I'm gonna stab at the throttle and watch it go really lean. But you notice it goes to lean for a second, but then it goes back to 12.5. That is because we bypass the accelerator pumps and now fuel is pulling through the boosters. Now I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be in first gear, I'm gonna try it again. Test the same, whoops. You know, it kinda got away from me a little bit right there. Let's try it again. Wait for this truck to come by. See, dead lean. Not good. We need to fix this situation. All right, so I put the 40s back in there. Let's go for another ride and we'll see the results. All right, so for this situation, we put everything back to where I painstakingly tuned it. And I'm gonna stab at the throttle and it's barely gonna move, go a little bit rich. And it's gonna stay right there at 12.5 a little bit of fluctuation but not bad we're gonna call this a good tune-up all right let's watch it one more time gonna stab at it goes a little rich but it immediately pops back to where we want it to be and like i said we'll call this a good tune So we'll do it in second gear. Goes to 12.5. Oh shit. Curve, curve, car, 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 car. Slow down, slow down. All right, like, like we're okay. All right, so same, same clip. As you guys can see, setting up the proper squirters, accelerator pump, and cam timing on your setup has a huge impact on how it performs and just drivability, period. Next, we're talking about the power valve. All right, to understand the power valve, we need to have the metering um, block out. Now the metering block goes right here, your bowls go right here, and your jets go right here in these two locations, and your power valve goes right in here. Now, most double pumpers will have a power valve on um, both meeting plates because there's meeting plates in the front and back. I typically block off the rear meeting plate because I think it helps a little bit for uh, keeping your fuel from 
air far from bouncing around. That's just me, but you can put two in there, but I just usually put one in the front because generally you do all your cruising on the front and the back isn't really even touched. So what happens right here is this will open at a set vacuum. And the number on this is 8.5. Now, Holly has her own thing about setting these up and that really doesn't work very well because there's too many variables like manifolds, plenum volume that are just gonna affect these numbers, period. Well, I don't know where my vacuum gauge is, but I'll tell you Holly's procedure. Basically, this is gonna hook up, this is a compression tester, but we'll pretend it's a vacuum gauge. So you hook this up to your intake, you start up in your car, you put it in gear, and then you read what your vacuum is and then you divide that by half and that gives you your power valve, according to Holly. And according to Holly's procedure, my vehicle needed a 4.5 power valve, but that was way, way too small because I was going down the highway and it was literally on, in the 16s just cruising. So obviously that procedure does not work for all vehicles. Now in my experience, a really good starting power valve is going to be a 6.5. And remember, this is all based on if you have a wide band to tune your car. If you look right here where the power valve goes in, there's two holes. And what this allows you to do is as you're cruising down the highway and this is closed, it allows you to have a lot leaner air fuel ratio to save on gas and keep your motor from fouling out the plugs. And it really works extremely well. So basically, the lower the number in your power valve, the later it will open, the larger number the sooner it will open and just using an AFR gauge and cruising down the highway and then romping on it will give you the correct power valve that works the best for your application. So how do you know what's the right power valve for your application? Well, you got to cruise down the highway. You can't gas it no matter how much you want to. You just got to cruise for a long time, give it just a little bit of gas and you want to make sure you're not going too lean on your wide band, but this is where things get a little bit tricky. You don't want to go too lean, but being lean doesn't mean that it's also going to hurt your motor because there's no load on the motor. So what you want to do is drive around for a while and then you pull your plugs and see if they look stupid white or stupid, or stupid rich and you need to balance that according to your motor. So this is the point where you really do need to read your plugs, but you use the wide band as an indication that you're not going to hurt anything. And this is where the romping on a part comes. When you hit it, you got to make sure the recovery goes right to that 12.5 happy range because you don't want it to go lean when you're at wide open throttle. That is the worst thing you can do for any motor if it goes lean when you're wide open. All right, now tuning your jets and your power valve, it's a whole separate process. That's going to be wide open pulls and you have to watch your AFR. You want to first get it in that 12.5 happy range because you know at least you're going to be safe and later on you go ahead and pull the plugs and then you read them to see if you have any lean cylinders but with that said this is a power valve block off it goes right in here and what it does it eliminates the extra enrichment which is in those two holes right there so what does that do well that means you have to go up on the jets if you had a power valve in there so I usually have a power valve block off in the rear, so my rear jets are going to be a lot bigger. But how do you know if you want to get them perfectly balanced, you're squaring those jets? Well, you got to put a power valve block off in the front and rear, and you'll notice when you do this, as you're going down the highway cruising, you're going to be stupid rich, but you got to do watt pulls until you get your AFR in the happy range with square jets in the front and rear metering plate. I have to do that. You go to the front metering plate, you remove your block off, start at eight sizes smaller, and then if it's still rich or if it's lean, you either go up or down. So what you wanna do is don't touch the rear, you go down or up on the front one until your AFR is back to 12.5 happy range. If you're running methanol, ethanol, you're gonna have a very different target air fuel ratio and your carburetor is going to be set up different. Well, hopefully this video has been very helpful to my fellow car guys, DIY car guys that is. And it is 2020. And if you're going to run a carburetor in this day and age, we have a lot better tools 
and the price for a wide band is only about $150. It is going to be the best tuning tool you can have in your arsenal to getting your carburetor dialed in like a pro. Until next time, keep wrenching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and peace.